This episode is sponsored by Harmony and Matcha. Stay tuned for more information on both of them later in this episode. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, and this is the Wolf of All Streets podcast, where twice a week I talk to your favorite personalities from the worlds of Bitcoin, finance, trading, art, music, sports, and politics, basically anyone with a good story to tell. Now, the last time I had Jeff Booth on the show was September of 2020, when the price of Bitcoin was around $10,000. I think it's safe to say that a lot of things have changed since then, some for the better, probably more for the worse. Notably, a lot of what Jeff predicted at the time has come to pass, both with regard to Bitcoin price and monetary policy. It's my hope today to get Jeff's thoughts on the macro market environment and that he can help shed some light on the economic and political train wreck that we are all watching in real time. Jeff Booth, thanks so much for coming on again. Uh, thanks for having me again, Scott. So listen, the Fed recently announced that the U.S. saw 5% price inflation from May to May, although we all know that the real numbers are likely much higher. What are your thoughts on on this increase in context of what you expected? Um, Fed po- policy, they're, they're stuck. They have to print. They have to print, and they have to keep printing. And that, and so you can expect that that won't stop. There's going to be a lot of talk about it stopping, or uh, or interest rates going uh, going up. But but that's what it'll be. It'll be largely uh, talk because if the if the Fed stops printing um, for any length of time, you're going to go into a deflationary depression. Um. So so they're they're caught in that trap. And, and it's one thing that's worse, and I know when you say inflation is actually running hotter than what you, uh, what, what you think, which, uh, which is likely true, it's also there's another aspect that people don't talk about. Um, and that aspect is the natural market is actually deflationary. And so you're not measuring from zero, you're probably measuring from negative four. Yeah, that, that that makes perfect sense. And obviously, I mean, that's what your book is about. And that's what you talk about quite frequently. So what do you make of the argument that inflation now is transitory? So the, here's the thing, and I and I and, and in Bitcoin and everything else, we got to be careful we don't step in that landmine. Um, and because it actually just may be it actually probably is. Um, and, and if you think about all of the things that are being pushed up right now because of staggering amount of uh, stimulus, and that stimulus push makes all prices to go up, but for, 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 for inflation to be long-term, move into uh, at this rates for long-term or hyperinflation, one of two things has to happen. The currency has to collapse, it move into hyperinflation, which is not likely anytime soon. Um, and and the other thing that needs to uh, happen is, or, or or labor needs to be able to demand way higher wages. And and what and what naturally happens. So now think about this and and uh, in a whole bunch of different scenarios. Um, house prices are rising a lot right now. Lumber prices are rising a lot right now. Three to, three they went up three times. So what happens when they ease money? They stop printing as much money, and the base rate on their inflation calculation is three times on lumber and up on pricing of housing and everything else, and that falls. You're going to move into deflation pretty quickly, and and what 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 that means is it's going to look like policymakers were right, right? So there's going to be a whole bunch of people complain saying that inflation we're going to get hyperinflation, we're not. And then it's going to reinforce that policymakers were right all along to print money. That isn't that. That's actually why I talk about that in the book. They are trapped in a system that has to keep doing this, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And pick and the theft of the middle class and poor gets worse and worse and worse. So the real tail risk comes from societal breakdown. That's what that's that's what ends up happening. Or other country because other countries are going to hit hyperinflation before the U.S. And you, um, and you'll see it in other areas, but you won't see it in the U.S. right now. And they'll look like there's there, there's uh, there's room. So you're li- you, we're living in a macro macro deflationary environment that is exponentially ma- uh, uh, deflationary. And on the other side of that pol- uh, policy is uh, is is policy trying to stop that from happening. Really important differentiation. Because a lot of people right now are talking about the hyperinflation we're going to see, and 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 then then the Fed's going to stand up and say, "Told you so, we didn't." 
we have to ease more. Right. But you talk about them being on this treadmill. And obviously your book is about the fact that there could be this abundant, beautiful world if deflation was allowed to run its natural course. But perhaps at this point, you would argue that's in a vacuum and doing it from here is effectively impossible. Yeah. So, so the system itself, that's, uh, and we can, we'll talk about Bitcoin, why specifically on that for me and my macro thesis and everything else and why it's a must own asset class, but the system itself cannot reset itself because this, because it, for the system to allow deflation to happen, you know, people talk about the great depression and, and, and deflationary depression and everything else. And they mistake what came first. What came first was a rise of credit that couldn't be paid back which caused a deflationary depression, which, which reinforced on itself. So when the, when the credit couldn't be paid back, there was just no way out of that, uh, out of that, that, that mess. And, and so people mistake deflation or things getting cheaper naturally in a free market because of innovation and technology and getting cheaper and faster and faster and faster. They mistake because I, and I, and, and it, it, it boggles my mind that we get so people get so confused on this because because it, it, in your personal life you're looking for things to get cheaper we all make economic decisions in our own best interests that that uh that drive into we're looking for uh for things to get cheaper and more more valuable and that's how we make our decisions yet we believe in a system that does the exact opposite we believe and economists believe everybody else, but us, <laughs> everybody else in theory should want prices to go up all the time. Doesn't, it doesn't make any, any sense, but anyways, two different systems competing against each other. One system must, uh, must drive prices higher and manipulate money to do so getting worse and worse and worse. One system trying to give us more for less. Um, and we're, if you looked at two different curves, right? 30 years ago, if you try, if you allowed the free market to work, interest rates would have gone up, not down. And, and you would have had a, a pretty big recession and you could have made a transition from one system to another system. Not easy, but easier. And then both systems are reinforcing on in opposite directions. Right. One system, interest rates have to keep going down, manipulate money to, to, to make prices go up. And what would any log, rational actor in that system do if you're a, a CEO of a company? When your prices go up and you, or you can't get labor or labor demands too much uh, higher wages, wouldn't you try to remove that labor with technology? So, so again, these systems are feeding back in the exact opposite direction. And the, and, and, and the risk is, is a way bigger risk than people realize. The risk is the existing system ends in, in one of two ways, and actually maybe both together. Um, revolution and war, or concentration of, of all power in the hands of the state. It's the only, it, it is the only possible way that, that the system um, and, and you'll hear along that revolution of war or concentration path of things like the great reset. I don't know what is so great about a reset, but, uh, <laughs> but, but, um, but, <laughs> but you'll hear things like, <laughs> you'll hear things like that. Um, and, and, and that is the way that system, uh, has to end, unfortunately, because it's, it, it's abomination against the free market. And, the, and, and, and people making rational decisions with their time and, 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 and labor and everything else, and, and, and what their choices are in the market are going to make different decisions than, than, than a bunch of people are saying prices always go up or making prices go up by manipulating money. You talk about what could have happened 30 years ago, and I've heard you uh, uh, quote uh, Taleb, you know, lighting small fires to prevent the big fire at the end uh, is scientifically proven to be the correct strategy, obviously, because the more you let something compound, the worse the inevitable black swan event is at the end. So 30 years ago, they could have fixed it. Do you think that in 2008, if they had let the banks fail and we had had a depression, that we would be in a better position now than we currently are? So it's really hard to say. 
and 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 this is uh, again it, it, um, structurally everything I'm saying is is right. Um, and and again, you asked why Bitcoin at ten thousand, why are all of these things? If you understand the structure of the markets on 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 what's happening, at the first first principle, first uh, basis, uh, like in my book, you almost have a cheat code for where the world's going. You can make a ton of money, but that's not the real the, the value. Isn't just the the money you you can hopefully hopefully, and that's why I do these podcasts. You can hopefully align things so more people can uh, can save themselves, their families, and everything else, and 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 hopefully you can influence the direction of where the future is going. That's uh, that uh, that's the hope. Now back to your question. Um, Thirty years ago, or sorry, two thousand eight. Um, you talk about 500, 750 billion dollars um, in the marches on Wall Street, um, ruining the free market, and and everybody's well, today five, ten trillion dollars. Nobody's marching, it, right? But again, tomorrow, to, tomorrow it'll be a way bigger number because it has to be, and that big bigger number is just a transfer of control from individual people to the state. That's what's happening, and the wealthy get richer and richer and richer by that transfer. Um, you know all of this, but now let's say um, one of my businesses in two thousand and eight, we saw literally one day the everything stopped. Our our revenue literally went in in less than half in one day, day to day, and then stayed at the new new revenue line and and. And worse, behind the scenes, we had letters of credit across different countries and everything else. And what happened is nobody would accept our letters of credit. So you had money in a bank here. You'd been, been transacting with different countries for a long time, trusted par parties, and nobody trust no other bank on the other side of the ocean wouldn't trust your bank. And 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 so you felt like when Bernanke and everybody came in to the rescue of the financial system. If they hadn't, everything globally would have stopped. It would have completely crashed. Banks, banks would have failed. All of our institutions would have failed. It would have just kept on unwinding. Because what ends up happening is you have a force of de deflation against a credit-based system. And a credit-based system must, there's nothing backing it. So once you once you once that feedback system on the deflationary spiral happens, that counterparty risk that happened in two thousand eight, right? The different banks, well, you don't have money, you don't. Have, it's just credit, and is your credit good and everything else? It just keeps on unwinding. And so I don't know the answer for what my life would look like right now because it's such a different and and what yours would look and everything else. And that system, as if the unwind happened in two thousand eight. But what I do know is this, the unwind now is, is a way bigger magnitude than 2008. And that's why they're trying to stop this. And what, every time they're trying to stop it, it's making it worse and worse and worse. That's that small fire is becoming a massive fire. So you're not going to, in the end, you're not going to stop, uh, stop this no matter what. But the, but the consequences are pretty stag staggering. So what I worry about, so let's say, my book talks about uh, deflation for an abundant future, right? Allowing technology to do the job, so that because technology saves our time, we we use technology to free our time, and that means we should, if we're letting the free market work, prices should keep coming down and down, and our time should go up as a result. So we should have more free time instead of working uh, like on a mouse wheel, harder and harder and harder and harder to keep. Uh, uh, right, uh, to keep pace with rising prices that are only manipulated higher in the first place. So those are the two different systems. But to get from one system to the other system, it's going to be um, winter is coming. I wish that I wish I didn't have to say that. But what, from one system to another, it, it is going to be it's a dark path because because we because 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 of this action of constantly printing. It is really quite a spectacle to see how normalized those huge numbers have become over the past 12 years. Like you said, 586 billion seemed like the end of the world. And now you can throw around 
3 trillion, like it's nothing right. and nobody reacts. Um, but it sounds like as it compounds that the systemic risk now is far greater than it has ever been in the past. And that one slight, you know, gust of wind on the house of cards. And this is an epic collapse larger than the great depression or anything we've seen before. It, 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 it is, uh, it just quite simply is the, the credit bubbles are bigger than the great leading up to the great de uh, depression. Um, monetary, monetary policy believes it can, uh, can, can avoid this. Um, and it can't, um, the, the, the market has a way of, of, of clearing these. And, and so these, these feedback systems kind of reinforcing on themselves in the opposite directions. It's a really interesting way to look at the world because, um, and I think, so, so what I just talked about is what would a technology company do? They would try to remove labor faster. Why would they try to remove labor faster? Because if they didn't, you, me, everybody else wouldn't use their service anymore because it would be too, it would be priced too high. So they're not doing it to hurt people. They're doing it to, to ensure that there's value delivered and we make decisions based on the value we get. So there, so that's what the free market looks like. And, and so when you think about these two feedback systems that are going in opposite directions um, and inside those feedback systems also going in opposite directions are um, the wealthier that have access to all of the assets and stocks and everything else wealthier and wealthier and the poor and middle class are getting poorer and poorer and inside that is wealthy have tons of free time because everything's going up as a result of this and the poor middle class and poor are on this uh, on this escalator that's going faster 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 they can't and they can't ca catch up and so those people which is turning into a large majority of the population that can't keep up they don't know what the problem is. They don't know. They haven't ever thought about this problem. What they think the problem is, is those rich, those rich people on the other side are stealing. They, they, they're getting, they're getting rich, not from a free market, from crony capitalism, but they don't know that. And, and so, so they're voting for people that say, say we need to redistribute, right? We need to take money from those people and give it to you. And how are, how are those people redistributing? They're going to drive printing faster. So it actually doesn't redistribute. If you took 100% of all the taxes in the U.S. in 2019, and you said, sorry, 100% of all profits in the U.S., all companies, it'd be about $2.25 trillion. You couldn't pay what they printed last year, nor could you pay what they're going to print this year. Um, so, so taxes isn't a solve to a problem that is being created by, by destroying money. And then inside that system, you have, now, now you have one system that has to, it's based on a fraud. It's based on inflation is needed for a society to work and think about that fraud, right? So we, and we believe it. A lot of people believe it. We believe they believe capitalism requires inflation. And, and, and it, but they don't question what is inflation. They, 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 so it's, it's like saying, it's a requirement that my money loses value every year for us to survive. It, it, doesn't that seem completely illogical? Insane. And, insane. But, but a lot of people believe that. And then, and then so, so inflation is really a theft. And, and that theft is imposed against the middle class and poor. It's like reverse Robin Hood. I walk into somebody's house and steal their money and I transfer it to the wealthy. Um, and, and, but, and, they, and they think 2% is a good number. Well, okay, so 2% so theft is okay, but 3% theft isn't. And, that, and so the rate of theft, and, and I know I'm using harsh numbers for a reason, I'm using harsh numbers because when we, when we hear monetary easing, when we hear inflation, they're designed not to make us question that theft. And, and so when, when we hear that, and, and it confuses people on what's really going on. So, so now the theft is a lot greater. And the, and, and, and the theft has to become greater and greater and greater. So, so what's happening is inside these two feedback systems that are going the opposite directions, you have money 
um, and that whole system based on a lie. And if you have corruption in the base level of money, then you'll likely get corruption everywhere else. And I think actually a lot of what we're talking about comes down to a whole bunch of conspiracy theories all around, because when people realize that there's that ever a bunch of things that they've been taught um, is based on a lie, they what would you do if somebody was bald faced lying to you or your friend was lying to you would you believe them on other things and 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 so what happens is people chase conspiracy theories everywhere um because because the root of money is and the root of money is our time it's just a trade of time um is uh is uh, is being manipulated Guys, I'm really excited to be sponsored by Harmony. I know all of us have traded their coin one in the past, but what they're fundamentally doing is a game changer. Harmony is your open platform for assets, collectibles, identity, and governance. Think of it as the one to bridge all blockchains. Harmony is open and insanely fast with two second transaction finality and a hundred times lower fees than Ethereum. Their secure bridges offer cross-chain asset transfers with Ethereum, Binance, and almost every single other chain. Maybe most exciting is that Harmony, in cooperation with Sushi, will be providing $4 million in incentives for liquidity mining. Find out more about this program and build something yourself at thewolfofallstreets.link slash Harmony. That's thewolfofallstreets.link slash Harmony. Build on Harmony, run on all chains. Guys, I really hope that all of you are not still trading on the old platforms like Uniswap when there are much better options like Matcha. And now Matcha has upgraded to 2.0. Now, I've told you about Matcha a number of times. They have limit orders, which these other platforms don't, which is absolutely incredible. So you don't have to sit there staring at your screen waiting for that perfect moment to enter or exit a trade. And they also aggregate liquidity from all of the different platforms, finding you the best price and reduced fees. But now they have Matcha 2.0 and have added so many awesome features. Matcha is now the only DEX with an integrated fiat on-ramp. You can put your dollars directly onto the platform. They also now have OTC trading for orders between 1K and 1 million, which is beyond huge. And maybe most importantly, Matcha now supports trading on Polygon, meaning that those gas fees will almost evaporate completely. Now, if you guys want to check out Matcha, which you absolutely should, you can do that at the Wolf of All Streets dot link slash matcha that's the wolf of all streets dot link slash matcha please check them out i'm telling you it will save you so much money and it's such a superior experience do it now it's interesting you talk about the language that's used it's sort of misdirection or semantics they paint everything in a positive light when it's actually a negative force i, th I think you could argue that the whole idea of growth falls into that, right? Because the only metric that matters is economic growth, job growth, right? We talk about growth, growth, growth of everything, but that's the opposite of what would actually be ideal for the individual, sort of as you touched on. They're just gonna, you can't create jobs once technology takes them away, obviously. You just can't. So you're just gonna end up paying people to either pretend to work or to do nothing. Yeah, and, and you know, I, as I use this in the book as an example, economics is about scarcity, not value. And, and the most valuable thing in our life, in our life is the oxygen we breathe, our air we breathe. Why, why, don't, why don't we pay the most for it because it's the most valuable? We don't pay the most for it because it's abundant. Just like we don't pay the most anymore for information on Google. Just like we don't pay the most any, anymore for our Waze app. Or, or any, as things become, or our calculators or our flashlights on our phones and everything else. Because as things become abundant, as they digitize, um, that abundance creates a natural market force that drives them to free or nearly free. And, and so where do you pay for oxygen? You pay for oxygen underwater or in a hospital if you have COVID, um, but you don't pay for oxygen in, in your normal life because in those places it's abundant. And that's the same thing in economics. We're living in a system. And, and again, it's a system change. I understand the confusion. It's so, because we're measuring the system we're inside a system that's pr producing all of these exist negative externalities, and we've lived in it our whole our whole lives. And we don't question the bait, how that system was designed, and it's bumping into a force that's a bigger force in our lives. So these two systems are colliding against each other, and 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 obviously providing a whole bunch of confusion to uh, to most most people, and and they're trapped reaching for 
for what it used to look like without wanting to question what it, is that even possible anymore? What's interesting to me, you touched on the idea of crony capitalism and the lack of a free market. Clearly the free market's broken, but I think if you ask your average person, they still believe the stock market is a free market, right? And I would argue that it's the most manipulated market in the world, obviously, because it's a farce created by money printing. But then you'll hear the same people talk about how Bitcoin is a manipulated market. And I'll make the argument that that's the last free market that we have left in the world. It's the, it is the last free market. Now, you could argue that uh, if you just... It, Every market right now is manipulated. Everyone. If money is manipulated, every market, including Bitcoin, is manipulated by that force. Because if money stopped being printed today, everything would collapse, including Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin would grow faster out the other side, but it wouldn't be at the price it's right, uh, right now because the entire world would uh, would stop. And any people would race to whatever they could do to pay their bills which would be ca uh, cash Bitcoin would <laughs> that would be a time low back up the truck for and, and buy as much Bitcoin as, as you can but you could argue because uh, I I totally agree with you with as far as Bitcoin is is the only free market today but every single market is is biased by this money printing so that makes sense. My argument is always just that at least there's no centralized force that's uh, driving price action in any direction. You can consider whales or somebody, but that's just the free market and the result of somebody having more money or power than, than you do. But that's still a free market. Yeah, or, 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 the, or, or this. Uh, by the way, um, this is actually worth a thread to go down deep in a couple of things because there are a lot of people that believe Bitcoin is manipulated and it's worth kind of exploring that. Only. So so yes you could you could leverage and you could put a whole bunch of debt and you could short bitcoin and in if you're right you're going to win you're going to win a lot of money but if you're wrong you're going to lose everything you could leverage the other way and you could leverage long, uh, long and if it comes down you're going to lose uh, a lot of money you're going to you could lose everything that is very different that is a free market and and yes there's leverage being applied to the free market but what a free market base is on is if you make a bet and you lose, you lose and you get wiped out. And that, 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 and so if you look at the existing market, if you make a bet and you lose, you go back to the taxpayers to bail you out. And so, and, and, and so, and then people talk about Elon Musk and his influence on the market and everything else. And they think it's manipulated. I would argue the exact opposite. I would, I, I would argue that it tells you exactly why you don't want to concentrate power in anyone's hands because they can change your mind and their mind and, and change your entire life as a result. And so, yes, Elon today has a lot of followers who believe everything he says. He is wrong here. He is completely wrong here. Now, it might, he might be wrong because Blackstone tapped him on the shoulder and said, I'm going to sell down your stock. Um, if you don't, if you don't walk back your, uh, your, your idea on, on Bitcoin or, I'm, or, or you're going to lose your carbon credits because of ESG or, or any number of reasons, but, but no matter what those reasons are actually reinforce why Bitcoin is so important because anybody pulling a curtain strings behind, uh, behind our backs telling us one thing with misinformation and, uh, um, and doing another should be frowned upon. I, I agree. And also, uh, you know, if you're selling something on the stock market, you might be selling to the Fed. Right. right. That's, what, that's, mean, that's what I mean. Yeah. And so in the Bitcoin market, you may be upset that some whale was able to, you know, move the market thousands of dollars, but there was a bid on the books for every one of those, those sell orders. Right. So, I mean, whether it's one person who uh, capitalizes or not, there's a buyer for every seller. You, you talk about the, the stock market as an example, and it is, but it's just, so, so there has been $185 trillion of stimulus prior in the last 20 years prior so 250 trillion dollar uh, of debts in before covid um to run an 80 trillion dollar global economy with 185 trillion dollars of that that debt coming in the last 20 years 20 years now ask yourself this what would your house look like without the 185 trillion 
What would what would stocks look like without the 85 trillion? And you find the answer is pretty easy to see. Um, but people believe people believe houses will always go up because the 185 because it has in the last 20 years as you've manipulated prices by by juicing the economy. And so it took that 185 trillion dollars. It was four to four dollars of debt for every one dollar of GDP growth. And and now it's worse. And it will be worse again, and it will be worse uh, again. Obviously unsustainable. So where does Bitcoin fit in? Let's let's talk more about it on a philosophical or economic basis. You know, if you know that all this is happening and you accept it, what's Bitcoin's role for an individual or a government or a company? So let's start. So if it's just let's start just wealth because a lot of people are going in there. That's actually not what I care about it at all. Um, but let's, let's start wealth. Um, it's the, it is the best asymmetric bet of our time. Um, maybe any time I believe that, uh, that, that almost, almost no downside, almost unlimited upside. Um, as far as, as far as a bet. Now, why won't people see that? If everybody saw that, um, having an asymmetric bet requires most people don't understand it. And so most people aren't doing the work to understand it, to understand what that, what this means. And they're believing a whole bunch of the, the FUD that's in the market and everything else. And they don't understand this because they haven't done the work. I would encourage anybody listening to your show. Most people on your show probably have already done the work, but I would encourage anybody who hasn't just learn with an open mind just learn why this might be true because if it's true it might also <laughs> contribute to a whole different world for you and it's worth you, you uh, it's worth you it's worth understanding so that's on the that's on the money side and it, that's on your wealth side on the on the way up why is it important from a system perspective and that's that's way more important for me to kind of the 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 path for my kids, what it'll look like for them in the future, because the existing system has to concentrate all control in government. And, and you don't want to live in a dystopian society where, uh, where everything looks like China with more and more, more power. And, and they can remove you from the financial system at any point. And, and not only looks like China today, looks like China with AI and robotics. So very few people at the top with control and everybody else now they could be benevolent, benevolent dictators, but but who gets to decide for everybody else? If you think that these certain a very small number of people get to decide for the entire world, then you want this system to continue, and and it will look like that, or war and reset on, on the way through that that path. The only way to avoid that system, I believe, is Bitcoin. And that, that's a really harsh, uh, I know that how strong that is, but I've looked everywhere. I've tried, you know, you know, when I wrote the book, I wrote the book a long time ago. It's playing out exactly, signposts everywhere is playing out exactly as I predicted. Um, and the only way to avoid that is Bitcoin um, because the system is incapable of changing itself. You hear all the people talking about the Fed or the bank agenda and everything else and all of the different noise or all the noise about climate change, or noise about this, noise about this, that is all part of a system that can't change itself. And I use an example in business all the time, like Blockbuster couldn't change to be Netflix because they had 9,000 stores and they had all, and then the economic model of Netflix was completely different than the economic model of Blockbuster. So what did Blockbuster do? They had added candy aisles to their stores and we laugh, right? But but that's a really good analog. Same thing as Kodak did, even though they invented the digital camera. And we use billions of photos today. No cost for editing software, no cost for everything else. Complete abundance in photos. And Kodak's gone. Um, despite having 80% of the market share of photos in the old world. When systems change and technology changes the rules for how we get value and create things in abundance, an existing system is incapable of seeing how fast that's changing. And so what they do is a use a predictable, they try, to, they try to fight it and they make it worse and they fall off a cliff. By stopping 
by stopping creative destruction and the free market, all that happened is creative destruction is moving up to the monetary level. So why Bitcoin, going back to why Bitcoin, is what you always see in the free market, what you always see in capitalism or free market, if you buy what I just said and look at evidence everywhere, is the system change is impossible from the system. It requires something outside the system to change it. And that requirement on Bitcoin is actually also a really positive development. Because, because that po positive development, it means the system can keep flailing around and people can offboard. And if enough people move into Bitcoin um, over, time, o over time, you can get an easier transition from one system to another. It won't be easy, but it, it will be easier that more and more and more, pe more, and more uh, pe uh, people on Bitcoin. And for the people with Bitcoin, it'll be much easier. But it won't. Um, but so it, it, system change requires kind of a, a, somebody from the outside on a, on, on, or, uh, and Bitcoin is outside the system coming to attack the system. I don't think I've ever heard it expressed that way. So Bitcoin effectively can act as a bridge that softens the blow of the transition between the systems. I always sort of looked at it as a hedge and opt out. You're lucky if you got it, you're kind of screwed if you don't. But as you said, if enough people adopt it, you could sort of have this intermediary system as there's the rate as a re as there's a reset. That's that's why it's got that's why I try now, by the way, and I in this, I want to be careful. I completely understand why there's a whole bunch of toxicity in in Bitcoin. And, and, and it's part of it. And it's a free market and they can, and people can say what they want. And, 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 and by the way, and a bunch of those people are also my friends. And, and, and so, but, and, and so, and I understand if, if you have, if you're kind of fighting against lies and injustice and over and over and over that can take its toll and you just lash out and everything else and you say you say things like have fun staying poor and everything else so i don't care that they do that or anybody because some of them are my friends and they do that and everything else the reason i don't um and sometimes it's hard because you you hear things that are like are you kidding me like really um the um it, why i don't is i want more people on this asset class i want more people to learn I want more people to really understand because it's really important that more people understand it. That's what that's what uh, 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 that, that's that's my the reason for not not kind of biting on all the bullshit and and everything else because uh, I want more people to learn it and I, and that bri and that bridge is going to be really important. It's so interesting. Um, I love the blockbuster example. Um, and Kodak because, and I don't know if it's ever been expressed in this way, but you talk about companies and banks that were too big to fail, but now you have these structures like those companies that are too big to succeed. That's right? it, they, that, yeah. Yeah. Cause they, they, like you said, it was impossible to pivot because you can't close 9,000 stores and fire all of your employees so that you can start a streaming service. That's the fed today. Right. That's, every, say, that's, that's the a, government. That, that's ever that's the government. That's the Fed today. That's the every bank today. Um, and and so if you're in that system and it looks like that and you have no idea how to get to the other side, what do you do? Print. And you print. You keep on print, you keep on printing. And you and and you, but again, as a byproduct of printing, you have to make up more lies. And you have to and, and you have to deceive, which brings more people onto Bitcoin faster because more people see the truth more people are opening up their eyes to the truth of, of, of that fraud that's inside the financial system, not through bad people, through, through, through a system doing everything it can to survive. And, and, and then the other side of this is very few people will move from entrepreneurs, a lot of Bitcoin people that have gone through down the rabbit hole. What, what they do is they go through and they imagine a better future and then all of the energy goes into creating that better future, all right? So that's what I would do in every business. You don't start a business to 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 say, I know I'm gonna how to take stuff from people faster, right? <laughs> you you start a business to say, I have this idea that this doesn't make any sense in the existing system, and 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 I'm gonna create something of value for people. So so that 
what ends up happening inside that is those those people design the, a better world for us to move to and they have a picture in their mind of what that world what world looks like and as more and more people see that picture there's hope for a better future and they move to they, they move from one system to another system and so t today we have we have a system that we can i don't think anybody could say this system works really well for everybody Right. It's a real and, and it's even people caught in the system, even people saying it, but but you can see something clinging for life, getting worse and worse and worse and negative externalities everywhere. Um, and you can see the divide of society. And everybody having their idea of what's wrong. That are two, <laughs> two kind of two spots away from the first principle driving it all from the root cause driving it all this inflation deflation technology led deflation so but they're talking out out here and so you have flailing around over there but uh, but but people normally don't leave a system out of fear right so there needs to play, be a place to go to and 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 so as it, in bitcoin if we talk about the citadels and, and 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 we have citadels and we we have everything and nobody else has any anything more people will stay stuck in an existing system out of fear that that's not the world they want to live in and i don't think the world looks anything like that citadel world in fact it's not a world i want to live in i don't want to walk out of my house um, and have 99 percent of the people starving I, I, it's not a world that i want to live in what i want is truth I want a free market. I want truth. I want, instead of taxes being hidden in inflation that hurt a whole bunch of people, I want governments to tell me the truth and say, hey, if I'm going to compete for your dollars and your business, here's what taxes need to look like for roads, firemen, everything else. So you don't want firemen? You don't want you don't want firefighters in your community? Okay, there's there's going to be uh, there's going to be lower taxes, but. I don't want a system that just abruptly stops and goes into to Bitcoin. It's not a world. I want a transition mechanism and I want more people to tell the truth. And that truth, what that means, what that would force on, because again, people in Bitcoin as well, now if you argue the other side of what's happening here now in Bitcoin, they are misrepresenting what it would look like in a Bitcoin driven world to what it looks like now. With Bitcoin, government has to get way smaller because they have to tell the truth. And and so so a lot of the negative, the, the negativity that a bunch of Bitcoin feel and they lash out against the existing system, it wouldn't look like that at all in a new system that's driven by, by Bitcoin. But anyways, the point is, it's way easier for people to move from, from fear to hope if there's a picture painted of what the hope looks like. Right, what it what it looks like on the other side. Path path to get there. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, you talk about truth, and obviously that uh, if you're going to print more, it requires more lying and, and more deceit. I question sometimes though if it's purposefully de deceptive, purposefully deceptive, or if they believe their own lie. Because I'm inclined to believe that your average central banker probably has been raised in that same system and believes that uh, they can print their way out of it and that their policy is, you know, proven and, and that's the end game. So it gets, it, 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 it's even worse than that. And you're right. I think many don't know, but then, then even if you, even if you bring this to light, which is, it, it's impossible to irrefute what, what, I, what, yeah. what I've laid out in the book. It's impossible. So it's been 18 months, it's been a bestseller in a whole bunch of countries. And the only people that talk about, uh, it, it don't give any reasons to, 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 to kind of any factual reasons, they throw stones um, or and say it's, it's, it's uh, uh, about the book. So, so it, again, the typical FUD that you'd hear, no inflation is critical and everything. And this, this guy doesn't understand economics. Okay, <laughs> um, the um, but but nobody has debated me on the first principles of what I'm talking about or said I'm wrong. That's kind of staggering. It so is. so in, in 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 that long, and I'm open to that debate all day long. You you bring on Powell, bring on anybody else. 
but now let's go into where what you're what you're talking about so so and this is where it gets i i don't want to say sinister but that that word's too strong but it, but it but when a system is feeding back like this it's easy to delude yourself that you're doing it to help other people because if you didn't the, the world would collapse and and what that that what that creates a, a, is but i have to to help other people and that's the lie people believe and that's the and 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 and, and, it, and, it, and it it tries to and they have more and more power as they take more and more freedoms away from people because they believe they're put on this earth to be able to do that because only they can help and that's the lie they they uh, they, they believe and if you see if you see dictators if you see if you see what happened in in the 30s if you you see what happened in in um throughout germany nazi germany and everything else a lot of people fell into that because they wanted to drive a better society and everything else and they believe they truly believe that that's that they're helping more people by doing that and it just and and um, as human beings we are very gullible to those things and and so i don't want uh i don't want domain over other people i want uh and, but a lot of people do want domain over over other people it's uh it's my idea it might it's it, it must be me i'm the savior so it's either it's either they believe that it's for your own good or that they're choosing the lesser of two evils well right. this so even if they do understand they say well it's bad but it's not as bad as depression so we're gonna and, and so let's let, let's let's play both sides. So we we just walked through a situation where where there's a whole bunch of people that don't know or they know and they're making decisions, lying, but they're making decisions that they're trying to uh, tr uh, uh, trying to help. Let's walk um, through. Let's walk through the opposing scenario on central banks and said they know. They all know right now, but. If they say, hey, we better go to Bitcoin right now, everything stops. All right. So even if you knew, I'll tell you this, honest, if I knew, I, behind the scenes, I would be architecting the path. In every, in every country, I suspect, in any freedom-based country, I bet you there are people architecting paths right now for Bitcoin. We just don't see it right now because if they signal that path, um, then the, the, then Collapses. everything starts uh, cl uh, collapsing. So so if I'm if I, if I'm inside uh, if I'm inside the, the the government, I'm very then and I know, then then I'm trying to architect a path. I um, I don't know if I believe that that that's what's happening, um, but but it's certainly happening in some countries. I think they're probably trying to architect a path, but not as many as we would hope would be doing it towards Bitcoin. That's my feeling is that they have some old archaic, uh, you know, economic system where they believe they can hedge against inflation, but Bitcoin, they don't take seriously enough to be the answer as yeah. of yet. What blows my mind though, these collapses always happen, right? And then there's always an excuse. We had bad data. We had bad information. <laughs> we didn't see it coming. And that, that, is so like uh, it, it, it makes you feel like they think you're so stupid because you wrote a book about it. We all see it. We're sitting here talking about it and it's going to collapse at some point. And they're going to say, well, the housing data was wrong for the last year and we didn't know that that collapse was coming. And they're going to ignore the entire systemic risk that they built for decades and even centuries to some degree. So yeah. How, what, what's the answer? Because so that's why I say it. Bitcoin's a path, and it's through. But but here, it, think about this: when this collapse happens, let's say let's say they stop easing, um, or or stop easing for long enough that it starts to unwind, and and they have to go in and maybe nationalize banks, maybe do something else because that unwind. But in that scenario, in that scenario, do you think anybody that's that says deflation creates an abundant future would look, uh, would look smart. I, I would look like a fool. 
Yeah, they would um, or not. it's it's still true, right? Once we get to the other side, but people would conflate the the what I'm talking about to the debt bubble that's collapsing. And they and and what that would do is it would give more power to the government to say you're in control because we we need money right now. That's what happened in 2008. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. That's what happened in COVID in March of last year. You're you're ceding control to solve the short term. That's and the problem is created by by short term thinking that's constantly trying to essentially getting elected by promising more than you can give and constantly promising more than you can give that has to explode and more and more, you have to keep making promises and more. So that path, unwinding that path is not going to be easy. But it, but now, now what would people do? What would, pe who would people vote for? Let, let's say, let's say uh, you and I are politicians we're, and we're competing to be, I'm in the can in Canada, I can, but we're competing to be uh, president of the U United St uh, States and your, your policy is, don't worry, I'm going to pay you more money. I'm going to increase minimum wage and I'm going to print money to increase minimum wage and I'm going to print more money to have all these infrastructure services so you're working. And my policy is free market and and, <laughs> and, and, the, and the collapse that's going to happen. But on the other side, you won't be a slave. You'll, be, uh, uh, you'll get more and more for less forever and your time will go up. Who wins that? Me, Pretty of course. Uh, yeah. I mean, and, and, you know, and I think that a uh, huge factor in all of this is the fact that uh, politics became a career and not a public service with time. And you, so your incentive as a politician is always to keep yourself in office and not lose your job. Yeah. I, I wish that that wasn't the case. I wish, and maybe, maybe certain people go in with it, with one, one assumption to really help, but then, it, then again, they're in a system and the system mm -hmm. keeps on feeding back. I, I spoke twice to the House of Commons in Canada um, and on my speaking part, so I was asked to speak to the Finance Committee at the House of Commons, so a bunch of politicians on, on this thesis and everything else. And what I realized from that, those, uh, those talks is because you're waiting your, your, your turn and there's about 15 other, 16 other people in kind of a slot of time that, uh, that are going through the same thing all 15 other and than me, every other one was this entire part of the economy collapses if I don't get this much money, this does this. So it's everybody all day long, they hear these stories about their constituents on what's gonna happen. And, 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 then, and then the central bank says, I can solve it for you, right? Here, do, we'll, we'll, do, just print more money. So what the, the bias, what normally happens, they don't know they're making long-term damaging conversation, making it worse and worse and worse. They don't know, they're sitting in a system that m must make it worse, but I understand it. Plugging a hole in the boat while three more holes are, are gaping exactly. and thinking that you're not yeah. going to sink the boat. But it, it probably trickles down, not just at the political level, but down to your average individual as well, because even understanding all of this, I doubt that many people would choose a decade of pain for long-term gain over send me my check now. It's, it's why Bitcoin's required. It's why the system can't solve itself because the system will keep reinforcing exactly what we just said. It will over and over and over and reinforce. And it's not bad people. It's short-term thinking and, and people don't want to face the consequences of, of moving to this. They can't see where this moves to. So they will always bias towards doing uh, doing that, that short term. And so, and then, and then we, we look at those people and we go, what are you doing? But we don't actually empathize with what we might do in their position. Yeah. If you can't pay for your food for your family, you don't have the education that you might have, Scott, or I might have that, 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 or the curiosity. And that curiosity only came from having privilege enough to lit it, to, to go through this and then, then, and dig deeper and deeper. If you didn't, if you were growing up in the ghetto and everything else and, 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 and didn't have access to anything else, how would you see it? And what would you, what might you, what might you do? You're going to feed back into the system. Yeah. You're saying to someone starve so that society can be better in 10 years. Yeah. Nobody will make that choice. And so, so as you, as you, as, as a system forces inequality on a whole bunch more people and tries to cons consolidate power as a result, 
the natural byproduct of that system is a whole bunch of people go to the system that's creating the problem to be able to try to solve the problem, which makes it all, which makes it all, uh, all worse. And that's why, that's why you have to have a different system that competes against that, just like in any business. Uh, it's like a battered spouse coming back over and over again yeah. because they're too afraid to leave. <laughs> <laughs> right. But if, um, but but again, we see it. We we laugh at these things and we look at uh, other people through through a a sense of um, what we do instead of what we might do in their situation. Sure, I a hundred percent agree. I know that I would choose food for my children over a theoretical future. Exactly. And so, 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 you know, if that's true, then you, you understand how much, uh, how much reinforcement the system has and how much power the system gains by that reinforcement and why media is part of that system. And everything becomes part of that system is that vortex takes over all conversations. When I said, uh, corruption in the base level layer of money, that's what I'm actually meaning. That corruption has to take over the entire system and over and over and over. But you cannot totally understand why, again, rational actors acting in their own best interests will, will, make, uh, will make decisions based on that system and what the repercussions of that will look like to society. And, and so if you look at Bitcoin as a bridge through that, that's the, I think that's the best way to look at that, that path. So you touched on it very briefly that uh, government would necessarily become smaller if we were living in that world that was based on Bitcoin. What other things do you see if the world moved to a Bitcoin standard? What would the world look like? So, so to me, the, the key aspect uh, in this, and this is really, this is so hard for people to wrap their heads around because they're measuring their, system, their house prices, everything else in a system that's inflating all the time. They can't understand what what it might look on the other side. So this is, uh, this is hard for people to get, but, but technology frees our time and makes things more abundant everywhere you look. The only reason you use technology is time savings, make your life better. Same for a business. And that time say that time savings comes with a labor savings. So labor goes down. And, and if you let the free market work, then your time goes up, you get more for less. You don't have to work forever and ever. You don't have to have two, two income families working forever and ever to chase prices and, uh, that are rising higher. And the only reason those prices are higher, and, uh, higher is, and your job is required is because the, job, the prices are going higher and higher and manipulated to do so. The other side of that equation, and people also, uh, it's not a deflationary currency. It's a currency that allows for deflation. It's so it, it, it's a currency that allows the free market to work. So if, if, if I'm wrong on that and, 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 and AI robotics, everything else doesn't produce, um, less and less jobs over time. If, if I'm right, what happens is prices fall along that natural access, uh, the natural, natural pattern. And, and as labor is removed, prices fall by that corresponding amount. And you can live with, you, you, can, you can get more and more for less all the time on a constant trend. One of the things that people, uh, so okay, so that's if I'm, if I'm right. If I'm wrong and there's massive new industries created, then, then jobs will go up. Prices will, prices will go up against the jobs going up and, uh, up and everything else. But, but what it does is it takes manipulation out of the base, base money. And, it, and it's a currency that allows for, uh, for de deflation as a result. And deflation is a good thing because it means our innovation and it, so in a free market forces prices, uh, forces prices down. So I can't see any single plausible path that because uh, I believe most of the deflation is in front of us. Um, the 185 trillion to try to stop it uh, over the last 20 years will look like child's play going for, uh, going forward if you let the free, because most of what's happening is is we digitize and move online and everything, everything else. We I used to buy CDs for 1995 a CD for music. 
Um, and there was an entire recording industry of people who chose who could get seen, who could get distributed into, into record stores and everything else so that I could choose that music. And so tons of people on one side who wanted to be stars, who could never get through that path. Tons of people on the other side who wanted to buy music and it was expensive to, to buy music through that path. And in the middle, you had people choosing for us whole cost structure, distribution, and everything else. And then music turned to information. And what it did is now all of those billions of people could try to be stars. And price of music went through, down as, as, as everyone competed to be stars. There's a whole bunch of musicians that are stars today or TikTok famous or anything else that would have never been seen in the old world. Most. So, so, exactly, so it created a whole new who is who only who control a free market one all of those people competing and price uh, and price went down as a result and now i have unlimited music for 9.95 a month where i had limited music for 9, 19.95 per cd per uh, thing where does that 9.95 show up versus all of the record store jobs all of the distribution jobs all of the the sony music jobs all of the jobs that used to be in music, where does the reduction in price show up in positive GDP? It doesn't, that's the point. How about your photography, right? How about no, of course. All, of, all, all of those things, all of those things, how about your, how about the maps I used to buy that are now all free on, on Google Ways out and everything else. And count, look, just look at the apps on your phone or look at the apps in the app store that are all free as a result, because it's a line of code that does does that does that and and you'll see that all of those things are negative gdp right by trying to by 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 trying to drive up gdp against that you're you're obviously going to concentrate all the wealth in very few companies and people because 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 that's the natural order of uh, uh, of where things are go going and prices should fall as a result uh, a re result of that calculation but when we think about those things, we've just started to touch on some of the things that are about to happen. So moving forward, that that type of that type of power moves into our health. That type of power, education is already free. We just don't know it yet. Right. It's free right now. Yeah, the structure of it is not, but the uh, but to find Certi it yourself, go to YouTube and get a video or right or Certi Khan Academy or exactly yeah. certification is not free. And, and we hold on to a construct. And the only reason we hold on to that construct is again, tied to the jobs. We hold on to that construct and, and we try to get our kids into Harvard and everything else because we believe they'll get a better job because of the certification. And I can tell you for sure after hiring thousands of people, it's already broke, that construct's completely broken for me. I hire the best, pe best people and a lot of those best people um, are now active learners all the time and they're they're learning they're, they're constantly they're, they're constantly curious and education is completely free right now the most talented people in technology didn't learn it at an ivy league school and listen i went to an ivy i went to the university of pennsylvania i paid for my certificate like anyone else on the same uh, idea i just think it's changed dramatically i mean how's right. a half a million dollar education that's effectively already disproven wrong by the fourth year because information has evolved so fast better than being a teenager and learning to code on YouTube and having a marketable skill forever. That, and it's so, uh, so information wants to be free, right? And so as you turn things into information like CDs, like, but by the way, things like chairs with 3D printing and everything else and, yeah. and other things are going to be information. It's, it's information now. Those atoms are combined in a way that's structured and a physical way, way to, to ship them to China to be able to make them and everything else. And as that information is information into the cloud and being able to be reformatted at your home, it just has dramatic implications everywhere. And you put artificial on top uh, intelligence uh, on top of that. When, and I, I, I wrote this in the book, but intelligence is error correction. It's all it is. Um, so, so we learn just like we learn a sport by correcting our errors. You're two year old, right? 
will put something in his mouth that will burn his fingers and everything else and won't do that again. But, but, the more, but, <laughs> but the more we practice something, the more we error correct, we, uh, um, we, lear we learn. And it's actually the same thing that's happening in computers. So the artificial intelligence, you could just look at as error correction. And so we are going to lose our domain as, of, of the smartest over time to artificial intelligence. That could be, that could sound scary and everything else, but it, it doesn't. So now think about what that means. So you have artificial intelligence that in some domains right now is way better than us. Sure. Narrow domains, not broad. We're still way better at broad domains, but in narrow domains you have, and, and the best of us get paid the most. So uh, in a narrow domain, right? If we're, if we're, 5% better, we might get paid 300 times what the, some, somebody else is because that's how the free market works. From, um, so, and now, we're, now um, artificial intelligence in some of these domains is way better than the best. How could that not be a deflationary? How could that, because it doesn't cost money to do, do that. It gets, it gets better and better and better. And it removes now. Now add robotics to that. What's what's going to happen to robotics? So, uh, and I'm close to some of these industries. Really close to some of these industries. I have really close friends that are building some of the, some of these and seeing what's happening. And so, it most people don't realize how fast this is happening. And and all of those things, all of them, provide a, a rate of deflation that is faster and faster and faster on the other side. So we, so what I believe is that that future that we're moving to, it's a, it's a requirement that, that you have, um, the, a, a digitally native currency that allows for deflation that is not controlled by any single person or any single state. And, and if you don't, every other path concentrates wealth and power as a result. And so if I, if I just go through that logic kind of, a, 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 of that path, the only thing I've found is Bitcoin that, 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 that satisfies us. Well, there's about a thousand more questions I'd like to ask, but I know we're out of time. So <laughs> we're we're going to have to do this a third time. I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, I, I absolutely love that conclusion, by the way, because uh, it's not just philosophical or theoretical or maximalist, you know, uh, advertising. It's just logical. <laughs> but right, so, uh, so where can everybody find you? Get the book. Are you uh, going to follow it up with another book? <laughs> Do you well, have anything I, to look forward to? I, I would say likely no. Um, but, uh, but I'll never say never. Um, but again, I didn't write the book to try to make money off the book or, or, right. uh, yes, I wrote it for my kids. Um, and, and so the, the book's called the price of tomorrow. Why, uh, why, uh, uh, why deflation is key to an abundant future. Um, and best place to find me is just on Twitter at Jeff Booth. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this again. Always so incredibly enlightening and uh, nice to get some confirmation bias of the things that I think I see in this world. <laughs> so thank you for that. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Uh, speak to you.